So as the good people of Buffalo are left to deal with the aftermath of that horrific mass shooting incident, it's pretty clear that America sits firmly planted at a crossroads, at an intersection. An intersection of unrestricted access to assault rifles and other weapons of war and unrestricted hate speech that fills our airwaves and our social media platforms. Hate speech that, if not necessarily intended to inspire imminent violence, it sure is likely to inspire imminent violence, particularly against minorities and immigrants. And the only question is, what is our federal government going to do about it? Let's talk about that, because justice matters. Hey all, Glenn Kirshner here. So as we try to absorb the unfathomable horror that just unfolded in Buffalo, that mass shooting, mass murder incident by a young man who calls himself an eco-fascist or an ethno-nationalist, none of those fancy sounding terms really mean anything. The only actual term that should apply to him is he's a murderous racist. And of course, we'll now move into the courts and deal with issues of his competency to stand trial and his sanity or insanity at the time of the crime. Um, and we can talk about how competency is a very low bar and insanity is very difficult to prove. So neither of those two mental health aspects of criminal litigation will likely um, prevent him from being tried, convicted, and sentenced for the mass murder that he just committed. But this video is not about that. This video is about where we find ourselves as a nation because we are planted firmly, I would even say stubbornly, in America at the intersection of unrestricted, unrestricted access to assault rifles, weapons of war, and unrestricted hate speech being spewed out over our public airwaves and on our social media platforms. And it's hate speech that is likely to inspire deadly violence, particularly against minorities and immigrants. There's no two ways about it. There's no rational dispute or debate that could be had. That is where we sit as a nation. And all we seem to do is offer thoughts and prayers every time we have another mass shooting incident, and then we sit back and await the next mass shooting incident, generally a hate-inspired mass shooting incident. You know, why is it that we don't mobilize as a government? Why don't we have an all-of-government approach to this chronic problem that we are well aware of and yet that we do nothing about. And I've talked in other videos and I've talked on, on air about how what we need to do is regulate using the executive branch and all agencies of the federal government. We need to legislate using Congress and then we need to litigate when people try to attack the regulations and the legislation we put in place to protect the American people to guard against tomorrow's hate-fueled mass shooting incident. I want to take on just one piece of this today, the regulate part. I mean, why in the world don't we have an executive branch that says, I will use all of the powers of the presidency to enact every executive order that I can conceive of to get at those two problems, right? The problem of unrestricted access to weapons of war and unrestricted hate speech filling our airwaves and our social media platforms likely to result in violence against minorities and immigrants. 
man, I would never stop signing executive orders. I would vet them. I would get people a whole lot smarter than me to put in place executive orders that we thought passed constitutional muster. But let's be forward leaning. Let's do something. Let's mobilize. Let's use the awesome power of the executive branch of the federal government. Boy, I would sign executive orders all day and night trying to flood the zone with good. Flood the zone with good. The Republicans are forever flooding the zone with guns, vitriol, hateful, divisive language, rhetoric. Why can't we flood the zone with good? Not only executive orders signed by the president, but boy, if you bring every single executive branch agency to the table that has any dog in the public safety fight, however sort of uh, removed from the core mission of that executive branch agency. And, and here's what I mean. I can't name all the executive branch agencies. There's enough executive branch agencies to choke a horse. But just think about this. If we brought to the table the Department of Defense, the Department of Justice, Treasury, Health and Human Services, um, the Department of Homeland Security, Interior, Labor, Commerce, Education, Enemy, uh, Housing and Urban Development, the SEC, the FCC, and a dozen others, because there are a lot more out there. Brought them all to the table. And if the president said, I task each agency to come up with just one or maybe two, proposed regulations to deal with unrestricted access to weapons of war and the resulting gun violence, and just one or two proposed regulations to deal with hate speech in our schools, uh, in our communities, on our airwaves, on our social media platforms. Hate speech likely to inspire violence. Just give me one or two proposed regulations. I'll give you a week. I'll give you two weeks. Get the smart folk together. Come up with something that you think will pass constitutional muster. And then we flood the zone with good. We regulate, 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 regulate. And that comes in conjunction with executive order after executive order after executive order designed to address these two evils, particularly as these two evils intersect gun violence and hate speech likely to incite that violence. We flood the zone with good and then let the Republicans take the executive branch to court. Say so they can't flood the zone with all of this good because it's unconstitutional in this way or that way. Well, first of all, we will have drafted things in a way that we believe passes constitutional muster. But you know what? Let's go into court and litigate. You want to strike down all the good we're trying to do? You want to strike down everything we're trying to do to protect the Amer American people from gun violence and hate speech designed to incite gun violence? Bring it on. Let's litigate. Because if we win that litigation, then we've done a whole lot of good. And if we lose that litigation, we've learned a lesson. Because the court will say to the executive branch, I understand what you were doing. With these regula regulations and these executive orders, you're trying to do a whole lot of good. But we think you may have overstepped your constitutional bound, bounds a little bit. right? You kind of put your toe over the constitutional line in the following way. But that's a beautiful thing, folks. Because then we take that defeat, let's call it what it is. We take that defeat in court. We go back to our agencies or we go back to the Oval Office. If it, it's an executive order, we retool and we try to get it right the next time, learning from what the judiciary said about how we tried to do it the last time. We flood the zone with good, and then we let the litigation come. There's no shame in losing some litigation while you're trying to do good, while you're trying to protect the American people. This isn't rocket science. This is good, responsible, forward-leaning, aggressive government trying to deal with a problem that has been clearly identified for us. Just look at the body count. It's been clearly identified for us, this problem. 
Now, how about we deal with it? Because justice matters. Friends, as always, please stay safe. Please stay tuned. And I look forward to talking with you all again tomorrow.